today uh, there will be two paper, right? Two paper uh, to, to be presented and uh, discussed uh, by you. The first paper is the paradox of uh, Samsung's uh, rise, right? And the second paper is uh, creating the global talent. And concerning uh, this uh, paper presentation, uh, every paper should be presented by two groups, right? Two groups, yeah. So the first group, group seven, right? Group seven. Yes. Where? Okay. So, yeah, you will present the content, right? Of this paper. And then the group three. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I will come up to uh, give some comment, right? And some uh, critical thinking. And, um, yeah. Okay, so, are you ready? Are you ready for your group? Group seven? Yeah, so please come up. And, yeah, please use the microphone. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, we are um, and today we are going to talk to you about the products of Samsung. So, first, this is about how we can how we can charge the introduction, the strategy part, the genius part, uh, how this system will be presented by Jazz. Uh, inside the zone. This is part. Outside the field, there's a in this part and the confusion will be presented by the other part. First of all, I would like to add a few words about Samsung. I guess most of you here already heard about this brand. Uh, Samsung is a South Korean multinational company that was founded in 1938 by Mr. Uh, it is a group that has a lot of subsidiaries. Among them, uh, I can say there is Samsung Electronics, which is the most famous. It offers us uh, products like the line of uh, smartphone, Samsung Galaxies. Uh, it also produces uh, semiconductors, LCD screen, and so on. The second most important subsidiary of this uh, subsidiary of this company is Samsung Heavy Construction, uh, companies that produce uh, chips in South Korea. Um, so that's it for the brief introduction of Samsung Group. Now we have to go a bit further and tell you about this. Nowadays, we have emerging giants, countries like Brazil, Russia, India, or China, who are facing a challenge. How can they go from a local uh, home market to a global market? And so it is believed that they need to learn a lot from Samsung to make it right. Because a few years ago when it started, uh, Samsung was just a low cost uh, equipment manufacturer. And a few decades later, it became a world leader in terms of R&D, design, and marketing. And uh, a few years back, no one even predicted that Samsung would have reached this level. This position is quite leader because we choose a very strong strategy. They actually mingled Western business practices and Japanese business practices. The original Japanese, uh, the original, original Samsung business practice is based on the Japanese business practice. Uh, and so, so what we do is we provide a traditional, low-cost manufacturing 
know-how with the ability to make high-tech products in the market. Um, Samsung introduced outsiders, the company, people who could speak the language. People who did not understand the uh, corporate culture into homogeneous workforce. They actually introduced merit and pay to trans traditional um, values uh, of reverence for elders. Uh, they put the young people into the elder's position, which was rather dominating. Now we have young people who were authority to come to the elders. And so that's it about the paradox. And now I'm going to make my agreement to talk about the subject Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Fred. And I'm Julia. I'm talk going to talk about uh, Samsung's strategy and how did the uh, CEO uh, do. In, by 1987, Lisa Lincoln, he became the second chairman. And at that time, Samsung was the leader in Korea in most of its market. But there's also some difficulties for Samsung. Um, Samsung was a low-cost uh, producer overseas and and um, the Japanese electronic makers uh, were, make, were setting up all of their um, manufacturing in Southeast Asia. So uh, it was a big competition for Samsung. And locally, um, it was facing the rise of domestic wages and newly liberalizing economy. And how does uh, Samsung solve this situation? Um, early in, in the early 1990s, Mr. Lee uh, spotted an opportunity to the um, digital market, which the consumer were, were talking to with cameras, audio equipment, and other electronic products. But uh, Mr. Lee noticed that um, it uh, noticed that they had to develop their agilities, innovativeness, and creativity to. Uh, to see to the new digital market. So um, he looked to the West and launched to the practice uh, the pets, uh, well, and launched to the uh, Western practice. Uh, we know that um, Samsung was an original equipment manufacturer at that time. Uh, it was procedure, it was, it was with a procedure step by step and uh, how many you make and how much you earn. But um, for the Western practice, um, Mr. Lee went to mix with uh, marketing R&D and design. And 20 years ago, most people thought that was impossible because um, in, uh, in this past you, uh, it was very, it is not easy to predict your revenues. Um, um, it still continues in the Western best practice. Uh, it related to the strategic formulations and uh, talent management and compensation. Uh, finally, they built their hybrid uh, system. Um, all of this will instill final partners later. And to compete outside um, without this home market, Mr. Lee knew that uh, Samsung would need to engage with non-Koreans and um, non-Korean contacts. And in the beginning, Mr. Lee advocated uh, directly for the most critical practices. And um, it took great care to uh, change only what needed to be changed and ensure the company were adopted uh, the practices um, in a way people could understand and set up a new organization to stick out and adapt the uh, Western practices and to also Mr. Lee uh, solicited uh, his employees input uh, to the to the development practice. Uh, if if the if resistance 
were too strong and the company will delay the adoption, adoption and modify, modify the practices or even abandon it, such as the case of uh, adoption, stop option. Uh, that's really the result, and this is the changes under uh, Mr. Lee from 1987 to 2012. And we can see that both um, we can see that there's a, a high growth in many ways, like uh, sales stuff as well. And also in 2004, um, Samsung uh, Samsung became the world's second most profitable manufacturer. In 2010, uh, they achieved record uh, higher than Intel, Panasonic, and Sony. And this year, Samsung rose to the eighth position in enterprise, best global enterprise 2013. Yeah. Um, it, uh, we can see that it's, um, the results have been impressive, but it wasn't easy. Um, that's all of my part, and sorry, my partner will introduce. Thank you. Uh, thank you there for the introduction. And now for the hybrid system. Uh, what is the Samsung hybrid management system? How we analyzing this? Uh, let us first look back and think. Samsung has always been based on the Japanese management system. This is because the least father, Samsung's founder, was educated in Japan. As such, she has always been a believer of Japanese management model system. We must remember, indeed, Samsung rose to prominence in his home market using the Jap uh, Japanese model. It has always served Samsung well. However, <coughs> for the last 20 years, Samsung has been drafting Western practices inside its management system. This is because these believe that there are certain advantages of the Western practices that needs to be drafted inside. Samsung seeks to combine the best of both worlds. This is basically what Samsung's hybrid management system is. Samsung management <laughs> hybrid system basically comes into the three mix and match strategy forms. This is in the form of these three major points. A formal process to identify, adapt, and implement the most appropriate Western best practices. Steady efforts to make Samsung's culture more open to change by bringing outsiders in and sending insiders abroad. Intervention by me to protect long-term investment from short-term financial resources because when there's a huge lot of pressures, there's a huge tendency to concentrate on short-term uh, success while sacrificing the long-term growth. These are some of the challenges that Samsung face. How do you introduce a focus on innovation into a company that has always been optimized for continuous process improvement? How do you introduce merit pay and promotion into an organization with a strong tradition of reverence for elders? Because Samsung promotion has always been based on seniority and has wasn't based on uh, merit, unlike in the Western. This is the Samsung hybrid management hybrid system. On the, on the left side, we have the Japanese traditional system. In the middle, we have the Samsung's hybrid system. And on the right, we have the Western system. Let us look in details at what is the difference between these two and how Samsung combines the Japanese system and the Western system. In the first part, the uh, Japanese system has a huge focus on diversification strategy, whereas on the Western system, it is a focus strategy. Samsung seeks to combine both. It has diversification, but it has also more focus within businesses. In the Japanese system, there is a dependence on internal capital markets. Whereas in the Western system, there's a dependence on external capital markets. Samsung hybrid system seeks to tap into both internal and external capital markets. In the Japanese traditional system, there's a focus on continuous operational improvement to prepare for price competition. Whereas in the Western system, there's a focus on innovation, marketing and design to establish strong brands and premium pricing. Samsung seeks a hybrid of this both of this by a focus on continuous improvement and apply research and development, but also on innovation, marketing, and design to establish brand and premium pricing. Japanese traditionally has a focus on long-term relationship with supplier based on deep unconditional cooperation. Their focus is on long-term collaboration. They believe that success can be achieved through uh, long-term contracts. 
Whereas in the Western system, contingent relationships with supplies is based on market pricing. Samsung seeks to combine both. It has a focus on long-term cooperative supplier relationships, but with some level of competition. There's a dependence in the dependence on internal labor market, which results in long-term employment for Japanese traditional system. It's a security, job security, you could call it that. Whereas in the Western practices, there's a dependence on external labor market attracted by market-based competition. It's, it's much more good for competition in the Western cases. In Samsung, Samsung hybrid system has the ability to tap into both internal and external capital markets, seeking a compromise on both extremities. Japanese traditional system has limited recruitment, mostly done once a year and only for entry-level positions. Whereas in the Western system, there's open recruitment of the best candidates for all positions as needed. Because previously, uh, the strategy was always strategy always means promotion, and no outsiders were brought in for the high levels position. But with a new Samsung hybrid system, annual recruitment for entry level positions, and also open recruitment for experienced specialists. What is the difference is that now the higher positions cannot be filled by outsiders, whereas before we can only be filled by long term employees. And in the Japanese traditional system. Previously was seniority based promotion and the compensation was standardized. The incentives were also standardized. But in the Western system, it was merit based promotion and compensation and the uh, incentives were individualized. However, in Samsung's hybrid system, there is a co existence of seniority based and merit based promotion and compensation. It is mostly standardized, but also there are some individual incentives. This basically is what Samsung's hybrid system is all about. Now uh, over to my group mate. Thank you. Now I'm going to introduce you the part about sending side yourself. Um, first, learn from the past. I will tell you a historical incident. It's happened in the late 19th century. The Japanese government sent its elite officers overseas to solve successful Western practices and institutions. And here is what I learned from. Um, Belgian, British postal system, French postal system, American system of primary education, and the German military organization. So, how does the United States in Japan and Samsung? Samsung also sent the credentials to Japan for advanced degrees in engineering, to the United States for further education, marketing, and management, and to Singapore, Hong Kong, and New York for training in high partners. So what's this program? It's Samsung's regional specialist program. Uh, for, the mo for more than two decades each year, Samsung has, has sent 200 talented young employees abroad. And first, they, they send them to developing countries. And for the past 10 years, they focus on emerging regions, especially China and the recently Africa. So what's the content of this program? Before the employees going abroad, the company will offer them um, intensive traffic language training so it could help the employees to be more familiar with the language. And for the first six months, um, the employee's job is only to focus on being fluent in language, culture, and build network by making friends and uh, exploring the country. And in the second six months, um, the employee's job is to carry out an independent project of their own. So when they come back, they will be filled in a major post and the definite information about um, um, why other countries coming will be successful and also advocate for an experiment for best practice. So what's the value of the connection project to regional specialists? Provides the chances. The first, uh, the case one is happened in Thailand, 1990. Um, the specialist studied MBA at local university, and this school is uh, the school which many Thailand's prime ministers, high-ranking government officers, and the company CEO attend. So, um, this specialist conducted relationship with prominent local figures, and by his immersion, he also understanding of countries, regulations, and tax systems. So he successfully introduced SEC TV, audio, and video products to Thailand. And uh, uh, he also recruited a, a vice president of Hitachi, 
Um, it's very amazing because at that time the Nike was the market leader and Samsung is Italy And next two is happened in 1991. The specialist uses language fluency and personal networks to establish a sales of CBD whose sales double annually for three constructive years. And the past three happened in 2009. Um, the specialist devoted project to aiding a rural community. So then he applied the internet rural uh, knowledge to the development of plant electronics, which Samsung can sell and very good. So what can we learn from these cases? We all know that nowadays, nowadays business, many businesses will already operate in all star courses. So Samsung's experience <coughs> helps us to uh, now we should play more emphasis on developing strong learning more connection and its to pass. Very good, thank you. Now I'm going to introduce Bring Outside the Scene. We all know that Sensor is an um, international enterprise, but the culture of Sensor is in severity. And the only outsiders came from 1993, but they are not truly foreign, I mean, they are ethnic Korean. But all of these people are uh, from Intel, IBM, or Bell Labs. We have Samsung to become the global leadership. But when uh, we want to expand it to senior ranks, it failed. It, uh, it made some uh, resistance. The difficulties are um, cultural tension, social tension, and political tension. But all of these will be summarized into language barrier. Let's take Eric King, for example. He is a person that who turns Samsung into a truly global brand. But that true year he went to, he became the chief marketing officer. He did receive a uh, fully support from the CEO, but his CEO uh, was isolated from others. So um, after two years, he still had a hard time um, cooperating with other seniors. But he received some, he only received some um, relative tasks offer then so when the contract over he choose to left. Plus then some can keep this um, uh, excellent talent. So the lead find some solution. First, uh, in the early nineteen nineties, he sent international recruitment office abroad. So that most I try can be familiar with those um, talent, foreign talent. The second solution in 1997, they set up the Global Strategy Group. It's an international management consulting unit. The members from uh, North uh, North Korea and who graduate from Western University, they have working experience at the top of leading company. But all of these person have to spend two years uh, to learn Korean culture in GSG. And if they have any problem, they can report directly to the CEO. The third solution, in 2002, Lee made 30% of the New York performance appraisal depending on hiring and retaining. This is related to the CEO's performance, so they take steps. For example, Yang, he established a formal mentoring system. It means that when a new company in came to Samsung, they were the leader to help him to get know everything. I mean, the co-worker, culture, or daily life. Um, High in the retaining of uh, what? Of uh, a parent or? Uh, um, sorry. Yeah. The, 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 Thirty percent of their performance of trader depends on the high end retaining of of a of a parent or a local parent or a uh, for those kind of uh, outsider. Outsider. Yes. Oh. Outsider means that. Uh, outsider means that. Foreigner. Yes, foreigner. Oh, foreigner. Okay. Not Korean. So. Um, Still now, Yang will meet with those outsiders at least a quarter of time to uh, receive or to give some feedbacks. Let's take this example, Chai. 
is a math problem, but this is a really special case because um, he graduated from um, George Washington University and he has um, 19 years of work experience abroad. Um, so when he came back to Korea, he still had to pass this external process. And we can see that at first, he just an advisor. First step by step, he became a CEO. Why he can be so successful? Um, for him, also outsider, but with, that, with deep inside knowledge, he took care of um, to feed the culture. So here are his advice. Do not speak English with Korean colleagues and show full respect on behalf of other Korean colleagues of St. Soldiers. And the most important thing is he speak in Korean culture. For example, at the first he came to St. Soul. Um, there is a welcoming party. Uh, he at kimchi hao chai or uh, he at a drink Korean a wine to show that you want to be a member with them. And next, of course, at work, he will share his working experience um, in, in, in United States or offer some solution and suggestion. Next one is he will advocate for a um, mature practice culture. Does it work? We can see from this is number. This shows the rate of non Korean and we are working for more than three years. At the first, no one can survive. But after at the year just was established, uh, 32 percent people can um, do this. But after then after 10 years, more than half people, it's about 67 percent people can work for work at Samsung for more than three years. So we can know that Samsung try really hard to create a friendly and ideal environment. So all of these um, suggestions or uh, policies will uh, create a win-win situation for Korean and non-Korean colleagues. And this is my part. Yeah. Then can we help us to make a conclusion? Thank you. Yeah, very good uh, description. Uh, so for the conclusion, we are going to resume it in a few important points. So first point is that uh, at the beginning, the company was run by uh, this father. So at that time, the company were, uh, were with J Japanese standards because uh, Korea was a Japanese colony. So they been raised with senior based uh, promotion and also it only had national ambitions, so it was a local company, and uh, also uh, mostly known because it was a local company. And then, uh, after running for certain time, uh, the company faced a paradox, which is uh, when you want to grow overseas, your company, you need to abandon uh, what made itself uh, successful. So it was really a paradox, and that at that time, Lee came back, uh, came to the company and uh, just run the company. And his long-term goal was to restrict to the company and take the best of Western practice. So not everything in Western practice, because the company was uh, following Japanese practice. And uh, it's really hard to change practices of the company. So uh, it just meant a uh, little bit, just what is interesting, so you can create a night wide system between Japanese and uh, Western uh, practices. And also, uh, to import a lot of practices is really dangerous because it's uh, the employees does not agree, uh, not agree most of the time, so you have to make it carefully, and that's what it does. In uh, that's what he did. He made carefully uh, change uh, practices. So, for example, if the resistance, if the resistance uh, of employee was too strong for practice, he can delay the practice, or modify it, or even suppress it. So it was really a matter of time. And to accelerate the process, he just uh, uh, used two ways. So, this two way of sending 
inside us out, uh, bringing inside us in, which means sending local talent outside and bringing foreigners in the country. So, first, uh, bringing um, inside or um, outside of him equals only Korean ethnic, as we think, because it's easier for the language. And uh, also, even if it works for the lower level of the company, uh, they face um, a high resistance with the uh, higher level, like senior rank. So it had to be specific and to find solution on this, which was to train them for two years in uh, the GSG and uh, to train them before, before they came into the company to work. So they can be aware of Korea, of Samsung uh, way of working. Also, they sent uh, recruiters abroad to familiarize them with the Korean talent because it's different from the Korean talent. And second point is sending insiders out. So um, we just uh, focus on training high potentials. So uh, we send them in different countries to acquire some knowledge about the Western practices, mostly, of what they do in certain countries. So they can uh, come back home and apply it in Samsung. And it's a little bit different for other part of the staff, which is specialist people. Uh, by specialist, I mean people with uh, special skill in, in um, particular skill in uh, some field. So they can train them, become fluent uh, in the language and in the culture, and they then uh, build a project so they can be able to uh, improve their self and come back to the company with new talent. And also they send every year 15 designers uh, abroad so they, they can uh, learn about what is specific to the country and they can add, um, they add a lot of design work. So we can see the result is effective. And the result is uh, Everything was um, highly dangerous and expensive, and it was only durable because of um, Lee. Because uh, the chairman Lee was the person who takes the risk, uh, no matter if it's good time for the company or hard time, because it only focused on the long term goals, and that's what made uh, Samsung successful for uh, the years. So. Now we can conclude by saying that it's true that Samsung uh, made an important step from a local company to an international company, but now it's on another, on another floor and needs to make another step, which means, uh, for example, if they want to go in Brazil, they, they have to be uh, like a uh, Brazil local company, so no, they are international, but they also need to go deep in the culture of every other of its market to be as a local company, and that's the following step. Mm -hmm. So, thank, thank you, you for your attention. Yeah, thank if you have any question? Yeah, any questions from you about it? Uh, Unknown case. How to brand the company from the local company to the uh, international broadcast? Uh, company? don't take industry. They are uh, branding uh, human resources. Any? Uh, okay, thank you. Thank you. You are perfect. I present a lot of materials uh, in this. Uh, Original and copy. And then the second book, please come back.
Okay, um, I'm here to present to you some comments or uh, discussion about the recruitment, promotion, and the compensation of Samsung. Now, as you can see in this diagram, with Samsung's traditional Japanese system of recruitment, a once-a-year limited recruitment for entry-level position is considered, and combined with a Western system of open recruitment, on all positions making it possible to choose the best candidates suitable for the uh, open job. This results to a bigger and better way of recruiting workers from entry-level positions to, to experienced specialists. So as you can see here, from the traditional Japanese system, it is combined and mixed with the Western system, making uh, building a hybrid system of um, working this recruitment process. For the promotion and compensation, as for this one, Samsung had its seniority-based promotion and incentive compensation mixed with merit-based and incentive compensation to individual employees resulting to a much more defined system of promoting and compensating employees which is based on their efforts and skills. Um, as you can see, for this one, the process of promotion and compensation in Samsung um, makes it more easier for the uh, uh, compensation and promotion for employees in their respective jobs. For recruitment, Unlike before, limited recruitment for entry-level positions is done merely by having you working from scratch to pro, and that all managerial positions are filled through employees working only inside the company. But now, at the present time, employees from outside the company can also apply for managerial positions, and this time, the most qualified person for the job will be selected and hired. The recruitment process in Samsung includes three main benefits. Uh, one is that it has a lot of employees to select with, which means, which means increasing different qualities and skills to choose from. Uh, another one is that employees who came from outside the company might work unique skills and experience in the company, making it possible to support the existing set of ideas and skills and knowledge. And last but not the least, is that Samsung's uh, recruitment stimulates better work quality through an, uh, encouragement and appraisal of employees. Moving on to promotion and compensation. Before, seniority-based promotion highlights that employees' are occupation, incentives are standardized, meaning everyone gets equal amount of incentives, no matter how big or small the employee's contribution or performance. But they change it to a better system. That is, pay increase is now based on work performance and extra bonus is given to employees who exert more effort in job. Now, through this method, through this method, uh, competition is highly noted inside the company and in each individual exerts more effort and uh, is motivated to receive additional bonus. And with the coexistence or the combination of the seniority and merit-based uh, promotion, employees can see to it that promotion they receive has a factual and solid basis. Thus, they will stay in the company because they feel they are compensated properly based on their work effort. So I can say that the combination uh, in uh, overall uh, comment, the combination in promotion, compensation, and recruitment in Samsung is a best way, is a better way to do. Now, moving on to the next part. Okay, now so I'll cover on the challenges that Samsung faced when they changed its recruitment, promotion, and compensation scheme. And we also analyze like, whether um, Samsung actually did a good approach to actually um, change its scheme. So firstly, we'll look at um, South Korea culture in, the, uh, in particular using the hot state cultural dimensional theory. It focuses on five aspects, which is power distance, individualism, masculinity, uncertainty, avoidance, as well as long-term orientation. Uh, for this case, we'll zoom in on the first three aspects. So firstly, focusing on the power distance, um, South Korea actually scored very high on power distance, which is like a point of around 60, and it shows that it's a very hierarchical society, whereby um, there's a very clear establishment of authority within the company among the employees, and they have a very high regards for seniority. Therefore, when um, the Samsung decided to do vocal recruitment and very based performance. It actually sort of reviewed these cultural aspects and shows like this respect for the senior. That's why they were um, sort of system when Samsung decided to do a high thesis system. Yeah. Then secondly, focusing on individualism. Um, Samsung only uh, South Korea only scored like a point of around 18, which shows that it's actually a very collective society. 
and the hiring and promotional decision usually take into account of the employees in group and the locals form part of the in group. Therefore, when Samsung decided to do open recruitment to foreign talents, uh, they feel that it's actually a sort of threat to their own um, to their own job and their spirit. Yeah. And lastly, focusing on uh, masculinity, South Korea scored around a score of 39, and it's, uh, it shows that it's actually a very feminine society. And in a feminine society, the people here actually value like equality and harmony in their work. Therefore, um, incentives such as free time and flexibility are very favored in their work life. Therefore, when you do individualized incentive compensation, it sort of increases competition and people, it sort of disrupts the harmony in the work life and thus, um, the, resist the employees were not very acceptable to this such an approach. So, um, now we understand the culture of um, South Korean employer, we look at how um, the main challenges faced by Samsung. Firstly, there was resistance from the Samsung employees when they first implemented such a hybrid system. Um, can, as you can see from the case, the manager uh, closes brand when they, um, and they do, they do not offer to help the newcomers come in and adapt because they felt that it was a threat to their own job. And even though that the newcomers or like the foreign talents were performing well in their job, they did not recognize the effort made by them. Yeah. And secondly, there was also a lack of cooperation among employees because due to the individualized uh, incentive system, people only do work for, for most, mostly to their own advantage and they will not offer to help others and go out of their way. So um, the suggested approach for Samsung, which they could have actually done, um, maybe more focused towards the senior employees, they could have emphasized the purpose and benefit of changing such a recruitment, promotion, and compensation structure, such that they ensure that uh, to ensure that uh, all employees will be appropriately rewarded for their effort, and they will prevent free riders and maintain fair treatment. They should also stress to the uh, senior employers that the seniority in this company actually gives them the advantage in terms of rising because they have uh, added advantage in terms of experience as compared to the um, incoming new employees or foreign talents that um, Samsung recruited from outside. And lastly, although they decide to do um, uh, outdoor recruitment as well. They should also um, not neglect to train their own company employee and provide career opportunity for them to upgrade and develop a more global mindset so that they can actually manage all these people that come um, from all over the place. Yeah. And to ensure cooperation among employees, they could actually assess employees' performance in terms of both individual and group aspects, uh, in terms of like peer evaluation of employee by supervisor and colleagues. And uh, to reward for teamwork, they could do like in terms of rewards and compensation as well. So uh, now I'll, I'll analyze on whether Samsung did, uh, uh, is, is actually accurate to do such an approach. Um, based on my analysis, I felt that it was actually a wise decision to incorporate the Western HR practices into Samsung. Because the traditional Samsung practices were more sort of more useful for the rapid, rapid growth of um, Korean firms in the 1960s. However, in the 1980s, there was a very like rapid changing business environment. Therefore, these sort of uh, traditional HR approach are more of ineffective and added with the financial crisis in the 1990s, uh, it actually caused increased competition. Therefore, in order for Samsung to survive and go into the global market, the HR practices have to be revamped to improve the quality of the employees. Yeah. And uh, secondly, um, what Samsung did is they did not take the whole bunch of uh, Western practices and expect the employees to actually follow it, they did a whole existent and a hybrid model such that um, the employees can more easily accept it as compared to a total revamp. But what could be improved is when they actually change these HR practices, it could be better compared to the employees because from the case, we can see that the Samsung employees actually display a certain sort of resistance to the new HR practices. So we will now continue about bringing us outside the in. Okay, thank you. Okay, so we'll cover the section on bringing outsiders in. Um, so as mentioned by the case and the groups, Samsung experienced high turnover in S level hired. This is because recruits has poor gaps of the job expectations. Um, those are different company structures and language barriers when working in the company. So from here our group can infer that the reason for this might be caused Samsung lack of a formal onboard programs for this new hired new hires. Um, and then what, so what is onboarding program? So onboarding program is not like a normal orientation program. 
It is a process of helping the new hires to adjust to the social and performance aspect of their jobs by providing information, training, mentoring and coaching to the new employees throughout the transitions of 6 to 12 months. So, um, on what I can see from the diagram, it consists of five stages. Actually, the, this process begins way before, uh, once the hires accept the job offer, but before they start work. So this is the preparation stage. And then after that, when they report in for the, during the first day, they will undergo orientations and the rest of the four stages. So why is onboarding programs important? As reported by various literature, 65% of the new executive hired from outside to fill from the new jobs without an onboarding program. And 40% of the leader going to the new organization filled during the first 18 months. This is because 90% of the new employees make their decision to stay in the company within the first six months of the jobs. So if you don't have these programs, it's as the estimated organization cost of failed executive hired can amount to 2.7 million. So uh, the case also mentioned that uh, after the implementation of GSG, the situation improved. However, the case didn't really mention what GSG is about. So um, I would infer that GSG is probably an onboarding program for the new hired. So now we we'll examine in details what it is. So GSG has three main objectives. So first is to develop global manager, and second, globalize Samsung, and third, enhance its business performance. So as you can see from their operating structure, their clients were involved uh, in internal and affiliates company. So within a company, the senior manager or uh, executive will give case study of to the GSG personnel about the current prob problems that they face currently. So if you are in GSG, you will do, carry out the project task that the clients, which is the internal Samsung group, assign to you. And then uh, for new hires, outsiders, you will enter, uh, they will enter the organization by assuming the GS role. From there, they will carry out details project task by collaborating and communicating with the senior Korean manager. So as you can see, 80% of the new hires in GSG they will undergo, they will actually go for this route, whereby um, during the first year, they will go for the, um, the training program, which allows them, really focusing them to adjust on the cultural and operational difference by those of the different causes such as the basic consulting uh, knowledge and also some knowledge about the operation of Samsung such as marketing, design, compliance, product development strategy and R&D. After which, moving on to the second year, they will then move on to the affiliates company to work. So during this transit, it will allow them to interact with the internal Samsung management so that they are able to really blend in with the culture. So this is for the 80%. So other than that, GSG also take in the other 20% of the personnel, we are focused on going to the consultation road. So that training will mostly focus on giving consultations to the affiliates company. And after the second year, they can choose to move on to the management road. So now I pass on to Pauline. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, so now I'll be uh, covering the insiders out. The reason why we touch on this is because this, in the case studies, is mentioned that this sending insiders out is one of the most important globalization efforts done in Samsung. So what has Samsung done? Basically, it's this uh, regional specialist program. It allows the staff to think globally and act locally. Uh, now I'm going to tr introduce, uh, give a short introduction on what this program is all about. It was started in 1990, so it has been 23 years uh, ever since it started. And it's actually a 12-month program overseas for the existing employees. Uh, they will pay fully as if they are working on a full-time, but actually when they are abroad, they don't work at all. 
they are just exposed to any cultural and international exposure in that host country. So up to now, Samsung has sent more than 5,000 uh, 5, employees to more than 80 countries. The reason why this program is very important and the reason why we drill on it is because uh, based on a survey done on South Korean companies, Samsung's total sales actually consists of 83.5%, 83 which comes from overseas market. This shows how um, crucial international market is to Samsung, and with this program, it allows uh, Samsung's employee to have a global mindset. So now, um, what the employees will do during this 12 month program will be uh, on the first six months, they will learn the local language and culture, and they will build connections in the country. And after the first six months, they will go back to the South Korean HQ and uh, do a sharing session to their peers and supervisors on what they have learned and the experience. And for the last six months, they will carry out an independent project in that host country. And finally, after the whole program, at, at the end of the whole program, they will be back to the HQ for a two-month intensive debriefing and a um, sharing session to the companies. There are two basically unique constraints that the employees uh, who take part in this program has to follow. Basically, first, it, they must not have any contact with Samsung's uh, local officials, so they have to be independent. And the second one, they must use public transportation in that country to make sure they are well integrated with the local society. So how does uh, Samsung select and identify the participants to who will take part in this project, uh, in this program? Uh, first, they will do a language test, and uh, it will also be based on their recommendation by the supervisors. And finally, it will be uh, also done according to performance evaluations, which will assess, which are assessed according to technical competence and also the staff predisposition towards global leadership qualities, um, like tolerance for cultural differences, um, uncertainty, openness to uncertainty, having the EQ and has a good relational skills because they need to build connections locally. So now I'm going to uh, share with you what's the benefits and how effective this program works for Samsung. These two guys are um, to, uh, one of the two of the participants of this program, Bill King, who was sent to Indonesia, and Ruth Park, who was sent to Brazil. So these two guys have become a local manager in um, the first one is in the Southeast Asia factory, and second, Louis Park, he has helped Samsung to tap into the Brazilian market. So the benefits of this program is clearly uh, to get market and custom, customer insights, and to allow Samsung to think locally, uh, to act locally, and suit their products and services. It also allows market penetration and development. It helps Samsung to uh, increase their brand awareness, and allows the company to have local knowledge, expertise, as well as connections. So, will this uh, sending inside this other program uh, feasible in other companies? Well, Samsung has invested $200 million per year in this leadership program, and of course, uh, given the scale of Samsung, it's very huge and it will need to cost as much as this, but to other companies which have smaller size, this amount will vary, and it definitely, it is definitely recommended for other companies to implement this program because it allows them to have a pool of global managers and uh, which can help them uh, to make their operation and business sustainable and grow um, in, long term, in the long run. So now I'm handling the presentation to uh, you, Jack. Yeah, because one of the things that we mentioned previously that the ethical lack is that it didn't do a direct comparison with Samsung to other companies uh, in, in comparing whether the strategies will work for other companies. So we decided to do an analysis on creative technology and see if Samsung strategies will work in this company. So to recap these other strategies that we went through, um, by Sam, uh, these are the strategies taken by Samsung. The latest first is the annual recruitment for entry level positions and open recruitment for experienced specialists, coexistence of seniority based and merit based promotion and compensation. 
it's mostly standardized, but it's not individualized incentives. And then also there is the interweaving of inter internal workforce with outsiders attracted through market-based compensation and also the setting of high potentials between work. So just to give a brief introduction of the company, Creative Technology is actually a Singapore-based company. It's a provider of digital entertainment products for PC and in internet, and it operates in America, Europe, and Asia, so it is an international company. And its products include personal digital entertainment products, sound enhancement products, ecosystems, headphones, and headsets, uh, headsets and webcams. So these are the three major products that the company offers, um, which is the Zen MP3 players. They also specialize in gaming headsets and also speakers. So to help us better understand the company, we did a SWOT analysis. And under the strengths, we recognized that Creative is a low-cost market leader, and this is pretty similar to Samsung. This is for Samsung or for Creative. This is for Creative, yeah. So it's a low-cost market leader, which is similar to Samsung's case, because they also pride themselves on the low cost that they provide. Uh, and also it has breakthrough technologies. Creative also has user-friendly designs for their products. And also, the thing that they have, which Samsung didn't really have originally is that it has access to multinational talents in its home country, Singapore, because of the ethnic diversity in the country itself. But however, there are also weaknesses to the company. For example, it doesn't have aesthetic design, which Samsung has strength in, and it outsources its product development, so it's harder for the company to control in the, the development of its products. And also there is a lack of creative input from its employees because of the um, high power distance structure that the company adopts in its organization structure. Um, in terms of opportunities for the company, because nowadays consumers uh, increasingly demand for new technologies and products, and one of their positioning is that they always produce new products for the consumers, so it's one major opportunity that the company can take can take advantage of. However, for threats, currently there is a phasing out of MP3 players because smartphones are dominating the market. So this is one threat faced by the company. And there is also increasing competition which drives down prices, especially in the lower end of the market, which is where creative is in. So after having an idea of the situation in the company, we assess whether the strategies were being created. So the first one we look at is insiders out and outsiders in approach. So to do a comparison, uh, we've really gone through Samsung. This, are the, this is the situation in Samsung originally. And then creative, currently they have a relatively heterogeneous culture due to the ethnic diversity in Singapore. So this is something that is different from Samsung, which was originally a homogeneous culture. And however, creative currently they still have a high power distance labor model, which is similar to the case in Samsung when they have the Japanese hierarchical labor model. And currently creative, it's also predominantly it has a predominantly Asia working Asian working culture mixed with some Western style competition. So in light of this, is the origin, original situation or? Uh, for Samsung, it's the original situation. Oh. Yeah. So, in light of this, we feel that with the existing heterogeneous culture and the Western style competition in creative, the outsiders in, insiders out approach will work well in creative, with much less resistance by the employees during the implementation as compared to Samsung's case. And the possible benefits that this uh, strategy will bring for the company is more involvement and contribution from employees, and also they can attract more foreign talents and develop the existing talent. And then our next question would be, would open recruitment work in created? Originally in Samsung's case, they had limited recruitment, mostly one year, and only for entry-level positions. And also Samsung depended on internal labor market, which resulted in long-term employment. So again, this is the original situation in Samsung. For creative now, we have open recruitment for most positions. 
However, the managing board is still made up of predominantly long standing employees. So, we feel that although Creative adopts an open improvement concept, it is perhaps not open enough with respect to top man managerial levels. It certainly depend more on external labor market and attracting top managerial talents and bringing more Western leaders. And the possible benefits that this strategy will bring for the Creative is there will be increase in talents and performance for the company. And lastly, with coexistence of seniority-based and merit-based compensation work in creative. So for Samsung originally, they, it's, it's more of a seniority-based promotion and compensation, and there are standardized incentives. And for creative now, there is, there is a coexistence of seniority-based and merit-based promotion and compensation, and it has Mostly standardized incentives, but there are some individualized incentives. So actually, we found that Creative already adopts uh, coexistence of seniority-based and merit-based promotion and compensation, and has been working well for the company so far. So our conclusion is that Samsung strategies would work well for Creative, and in fact, the adoption of these strategies might help Creative to resolve the bottleneck that it's currently facing and will improve on its performance and revenue. Here. So that's the end of our presentation, and we welcome any questions from the floor. Very good NSD. Yeah, thank you. Any question? No. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. I think uh, Samsung's case is a uh, is a very good paper uh, to introduce how Samsung uh, can go from local to global, right? And how uh, it uh, restructure its uh, HRM system uh, to become an international uh, class uh, HRM system, right? And First, uh, it, it uh, evolved from the Japanese system, and then he uh, uh, fine-tuned the system, and to find out uh, some uh, experts, some excellent employee, right? Uh, by means of their performance uh, system. Okay, so after they find out this. Uh, 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 this uh, ex uh, uh, excellent and exceptional uh, employee, then they send them out, right? Send this insider out to become a global talent. Uh, so after a one year study uh, of this global learning, then they can become the international manager of the, this uh, company. However, it, uh, at the same time, they try to uh, upgrade their technology and their uh, product design, okay? And also, they need to uh, attract some uh, uh, global talent can work for them in the uh, international market. So at the same time, they uh, uh, rebuild this HR system, right? And attract these uh, people. And first, they can be integrated uh, in their uh, Headquarter, headquarter, uh, by means of this uh, design of uh, GSG, right? The Global Strategic uh, Group, okay? And within uh, this uh, department, and uh, all this global talent, uh, they can uh, try to be integrated right, in Samsung's culture, right? So they need to learn the Korean, right? The Koreans speaking Korean language and all the Korean culture, right? Which is the root of the Samsung company. And then they can try to uh, contribute uh, their expertise uh, to this company. Surely it takes time, right? Take time. Uh, so uh, gradually uh, more and more uh, global talent can be retained, right? Can be retained there. Uh, however, we find that uh, Samsung company is uh, uh, capable of uh, their uh, R&D, right? 
of uh, their manufacturing uh, efficiency and also their uh, uh, marking uh, penetration uh, in where? <laughs> in China, right? They are the number one, uh, number one, the number one smartphone, like right? the smartphone company in China. Okay, in terms of this uh, 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 top level, right? Top level, uh, uh, this uh, top level uh, market segment. Yeah, and um, why? Because uh, almost they are one thousand, right? One thousand Korean. <laughs> was uh, transferred from Samsung to China, right? Not only for manufacturing, but also for marketing. marketing. However, if you think about the US market, can Samsung still prevail in US market, right? No, if you visit USA, who come from USA and North America? No, yeah, recently I, I went back to Canada and can find some Samsung's uh, retailing, retailing uh, 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 store for customer service. Uh, it can, it cannot outperform the the Apple. Yeah. So yes, many Asian uh, modern company they become more and more successful, like Samsung, like Lenovo, right? Like higher, right? Uh, most of these uh, company they uh, can become the so named uh, number one, right? The top one in the specific industry. However, they still need to find the new way, right? To be pre to a prevail in uh, this uh, U.S. market, right? Especially at the level of the high price, right? Uh, the high value added uh, uh, market segment. Yeah. So, uh, how should Samsung do? How should higher do? How should uh, Nerva, right? Do uh, in terms of HRM system. Yeah. Can they, can they organize your culture, right? Organize culture can be a, uh, reform to become a really worldwide class worldwide no I mean the world class the world class uh, uh, company like uh, DuPont right? like IBM right can they become a, such a, a company how do you think sure it's tech time right tech time but uh, they had, a, they can find a way, right? find a way to be such and uh, uh, a world class uh, a company. Okay, and so now uh, take a short break for ten minutes and then come back for the second paper, uh, which will introduce to us uh, how to develop the global talent, right? Global talent to work for you. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you for these two groups, okay. And please uh, prepare for the next uh, paper presentation. <laughs>